you on an island. Let me see you work, you work, you work, you work, you work, you work. Now let me see you, see you, see you, see you, see you, see you. Now let me see you, see you, see you, see you, see you, see you. Now let me see you work. Now let me see you, see you, see you, see you.
key to your success is your ability to move with the current trends like putting on this live stream and collaborating. And how has live streaming influenced and changed the scene? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's definitely been a major factor in moving forward. Um, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm not a 20 year old DJ just trying to play lots of clubs. It's more about reaching out to a bigger audience and bringing brands together to, to do more than just playing in a club. And you've always moved with the trends though, haven't oh, you? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I started the 90s, you know, <laughs> when house music was in, the, in its heyday and moved straight, you know, right through the digital age and you know, it's been more about festivals and outdoor mm. events. And I mean, you know, there were always outdoor events, but not to the scale that they are these days. Um, and then obviously live streaming has just become so popular that it, was, you know, it seemed the right way forward to, to move into that. Mm. It's good. You've got numerous releases climbing the charts on various labels. I always say this to you because you, I don't know how you find time to do everything. Um, I go on numerous music platforms and I hear so many remakes and samples from 20 years ago. But I find with your productions, you've always kept them quite original. Yeah. Um, especially with the tech house scene predominantly taking the charts the last few years. Have you kept to your true roots of, of progressive house? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, progressive house had a, such a bad name for so long, but I, you know, I kept with, with my roots, basically. Mm. And, and uh, I didn't move towards the whole EDM scene. It was more still staying with that deep progressive sound. And, and I, I certainly definitely keep everything original. I don't use any samples or anything like that. So. I Do you think it also right. helped with, with under the crafted umbrella? You've got, you know, various different sounds. You don't just cover progressive. You've got, you know, everything from vocals, tech to this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we've got the whole tech house label. We've got the progressive label now, the, the chill label as well for the compilations. And I think you've got to be, you've got to widen your audience. Otherwise, you, you know, it's so hard to to make it play um, mm. with just one label. And, you know, to, to have those few and try and target more people is, is, is definitely worth doing. I think it's nice to put other, those other genres as well in, in sets these days. I think people mm. don't mind throwing a curveball occasionally, no, do they? definitely not, yeah. Uh, leads me on to talking about uh, Meridian on Black Hole Recordings. Um, the track's been featured recently on uh, Solarstone Presents Pure Trance Volume 7. Uh, I noticed the compilation is currently sitting at number one on That's Beatport. Right, yeah. <laughs> Where did the concept of that stem from? Um, I, I mean, it, to be honest with you, I wanted to make something really special for for Solar Stone. I, you know, I had a couple of tracks with him earlier in the year, and they did really well. And uh, he was really into my music. Um, he was messaging me through Twitter saying, "Look, I want more music from you." And so I, I, Meridian was all about. You know, I'm, I live in the south of England, so the, you know, the whole Meridian area. So hence the name, um, and uh, I, I was just overjoyed when, when he picked it for the album as well as the release. Um, and then to see it to go to number one was just it's amazing. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. It's really good. Mm. Your collaboration with Porsche Cars <laughs> is that a little personal thing? Uh, well, you could say so, yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, I am a complete petrol head and always yeah. have been. So yeah, um, I've been into uh, motorbikes and cars, but cars are my thing, and I, you know. I love Porsche, always have done. Um, I follow them with racing as well, so you know, having them involved with this was just, you know, it was a no-brainer, really. And what about um, Denon? What about the new media players? Yeah, How? I mean, yeah, I, mean it, I don't know, Den Denon really came about because it was Simon Sinfield who runs our Chill album. He, he was good friends with Paul Kane from, from Denon DJ. and. Uh, and, and I just I was trying to think of a, a brand that would, had a, a you know a big audience already that could be involved in what we're doing, and it it just made sense to go to someone that knew somebody in our little circle, and so obviously I spoke to Denon, and they they were really interested. Um, were there any key features on the on the media players that that you that stand out for you yeah, when I mean, you're playing on them? Play, play, the ability to play two tracks on one deck. Or one media player was just you know so good because you know, I can play four tracks all at the same time, so I can have one looping, I can have an acapella on another, and obviously you know it just widens the the opportunity to play about and be creative while you're actually DJing, which is brilliant. And talk about your set this evening. How did this? Uh, how did you put together your set? Cool. That was a yeah. That was a, <laughs> a difficult one. I, I must admit, I spent probably a month putting it together and I changed it three or four times 
um, you know, I try to showcase um, music from labels that I, I work with or I've had releases on. And, you know, and it was quite difficult to to really narrow it down to the tracks that I really wanted to play, and it made sense to obviously play some of my music as well. So, you know, my set will feature three of my tracks. Um, the one that's currently in the, you know, the in the Beatport chart that's in there. Um, what about the uh, future for the next live stream? Have you got another one up your sleeve? Yeah, definitely. I'm already working on the next one. Um, Good. We've got some another few brands that I'm talking to at the moment to to keep the whole thing going. Um, yeah, obviously, I, I want to make sure that there's something involved that's to do with motors and music. Not, you know, I, you know, I want that link because that's what I'm interested in. Um, and um, I'm hoping to do them at least every six to eight weeks. That's, okay. that's the plan. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of work. The future is crafted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>